Hello, I'm Maki Benson, and welcome to True Stories on Inspire TV. Okay, my struggle with pregnancy. Um, it's funny how comfortable I am speaking about this now, but I'll take you guys to the very beginning. It started in July 2011. I had just um, gotten engaged to my husband. Um, and um, he was in Geneva at the time and I was in Abuja at the time. And so I went back home to Abuja and um, month after I found out I was pregnant. <sighs> now, when I found out I was pregnant, a couple of things, you know, different emotions, you know, I'm not married, yes, yes, I'm engaged, but I wasn't married at the time. So I started, to, the first thing I thought was, oh my gosh, you know, what am I going to tell my dad? What am I going to tell my mom? You know, I didn't even think, oh yes, I'm engaged to this man. I was like, what am I going to tell my mom? What am I going to tell my, my dad? And then the next thing I thought was, people are going to think I trapped my husband with pregnancy. And then I was like, I'm not ready to be a mom. And I was like, oh, I don't want to get married, you know, with a mom. And I thought of everything, really, apart from thinking of my baby and the pregnancy. And then I started thinking, oh, I'm not ready for the baby. You know, I'm, I'm not ready for a baby, I don't want a baby. And then I was like, oh gosh, what have I gotten myself into? And I never really um, took the time to really enjoy and be thankful for the pregnancy. And you know, I was always thinking, why, why, why this happened to me? Like it was, it was a bad thing. Like I was like, why am I pregnant? Or why this baby? And then a few weeks passed, and you know, slowly I went from being why, why, why to actually now enjoying this life going inside me. I'm like, wow, we're going to be parents, and my husband really, you know, he never saw any negative. He was just really excited. And then from that. Um, I was, you know, looking forward to being a mom and you know, enjoying the whole process. I didn't have any morning sickness. And then I remember I went out to lunch with my friends and I just, you know, told them. And I wasn't really hiding the pregnancy. I didn't know anything about, you know, keeping your pregnancy on the down low. So I, I told my friends, you know, me and I were going to be parents and everyone was so excited. And you know, we had planned dinner that night to celebrate. And then I went home. I went to the bathroom, and then I found out I was bleeding. I called my sister and we went to the hospital. And you know, you go and see the doctor, we went to see the doctor, and the doctor was like, um, oh yeah, you've lost the pregnancy. And there was no like sort of emotion from the doctor. I'm like, is that how you just tell someone, you know, you've lost the pregnancy? And he was like, oh, you're young, you know, happen for you again, but you've lost the pregnancy. So I think that was the first. Uh, first blow and then even more difficult was having to go back to all my friends and everyone I had told that were expected and then you now have to go back to everyone and tell them oh you know they ask you how in fact I say avoiding people because they'll ask you well how is your pregnancy going and then you have to see oh it didn't quite work out so that was really really tough on us and you know I went from now blaming myself that it is happened because I wasn't thankful for the pregnancy you know was God upset at me for not being thankful and eventually you know, we moved past it and I was like okay we really was the time we did the wedding everything was fantastic and then I moved to, to Geneva um, again I, I, I went back to Abuja to, to visit my sister and my mom and dad and I started to feel sick I did a pregnancy test in Nigeria and it came out negative, so I wasn't pregnant. And then I came back to I came back to Geneva and I I missed my period, so I went back to the doctors and you know he did a pregnancy test and he was like, "Oh, congratulations, you're pregnant, but you're only four weeks pregnant." And I was like, "I don't think it adds up because my last period was three months ago, so I should be further along." Even more difficult was the fact that he didn't speak English and I didn't speak French at the time. So I had to take my husband to every appointment. I had to literally take my husband from work and then he would try to translate as best as he, as he could. So eventually the doctor referred me to a specialist, went to the specialist. They said, oh, you have to watch my hip CG levels. 
So, you know, this went on for, for a couple of days, and they're like, oh, well, normally you're here to do that, we should you know, increase. And for mine, was you go up one day, you come down another day. You know, everybody in Nigeria, I'm praying, you know, my husband is praying. And a um, few weeks after, I went back to the doctor, and the doctor was like, oh, is that? So, he did a scan, and he was like, that's the pregnancy is there, but it's not in your. It's in your fallopian tube. And I was like, what does that mean? He was like, you have an ectopic pregnancy. I was like, sorry. <laughs> I was like, how? You know, how is like how is this happening? Like I, I just broke down there and unfortunately my husband had traveled at the time, so I had my mother-in-law come and they were like that they'll have to do some more tests to, to see if they'll have to do surgery to take out the tube or give a drug to, to flush out the pregnancy. So eventually, thank God, they did the test and then I go that um, all they have to do is give me a drug to flush out the pregnancy. And then they give you the drug, you know, all the side effects and the whole experience, which I don't really want to, to go into. And then at that stage, I think my relationship with God was, you know, was on a downward spiral and, um, at that point in time, I really didn't want to hear anything about God. If anybody mentioned God around me, I'm like, oh, you know, God has abandoned me. You know, where is God when I was going through this? Why would he let me go through this? Is this supposed to be karma? Like, I'm too young to have a miscarried and ectopic pregnancy. So at that stage, um, my mom and my sister, my mother-in-law called, the let's pray, and I wasn't really, you know, interested. Um, and my husband as well, you know, bless his heart. Um, he didn't really know how how to support me. So there'll be nights where I literally cry myself to sleep. And then he'll be watching me, not knowing what to say, or if he was saying the right things, you know, how to comfort me. And then I was like, you know, maybe, maybe I'm not meant to be a mom. You know, maybe it happens for some people and, you know, it's not, um, it's not for me. So eventually, I moved past it again, you know, got myself together. And um, yeah, and then we carried on with life. And um, a couple of months later, so at this stage, I had been pregnant every single year. So I was pregnant in 2011, I was pregnant in 2012 after we got married. So this was now 2013. Um, I was feeling sick. Again, I did a pregnancy test and it was positive and, you know, we are pregnant. So I called my husband and we're like, oh, thank you, God. You know, I refused to share my pregnancy news with anyone because I just felt it was unfair to them. So you tell someone you're pregnant, they're happy for you, and then you have to break the news. So I just did not feel comfortable sharing my pregnancy news with my family, with my friends. I just wanted to really keep it to myself. So I told my husband we're pregnant and we're excited, you know. Okay, this time it's going to go well, we we'll rest, take it easy. So I remember we we're going for a stroll one time and we we're just talking about life in general. We we're just really happy, you know, the pregnancy was going well. And then I, I just I told him, I feel like I'm bleeding. You know, let's go home. He's like, Are you sure? I was like, Yes, you know, I don't think everything is right. And then we get home, I go to the bathroom, I'm bleeding again. And I'm like, God, like, how is this happening to me? I locked myself in the bathroom. My husband was back, he opened the door, and I was like, you know, just leave me alone. You know, I don't even want to hear about it. And then we went to the hospital in in, um, in, in Geneva. And um, and I remember the doctor, you know, saying, oh, we'll do a test. I was like, there's no need to do a test. You know, the baby's gone. Just let me go home. And, you know, because we... This was actually Easter Sunday that we're in the hospital. So we spent uh, Easter afternoon and you know, night in the hospital. We're there at about 1 a.m. And then I got back and at that stage I was like, you know, I don't want to hear anything about God again. I was like, I'm just, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done trying, you know, I'm not going to be a mom and it's fine. And I, I came to London and I was like, okay, 
you know, let's run some more tests to see if there's something wrong with you. know, we had done tests in the past. We're like, okay, let's just do some more tests. And the doctors, you know, every test came back and they were like, you're fine. Your husband is fine. I was like, so what is the problem? Why would my pregnancy stay beyond 12, 13 weeks? And um, so I remember I, I suggested to my husband, you know, why don't we do um, IVF? And he's like, um, so I go, no, it's fine. When the time is right, we'll have our own kids. You know, he didn't want to hear about it. And uh, I was in London one, one, um, one evening, and I slowly, from getting over the um, the pain, and then feeling like God has abandoned me, I started, you know, slowly creeping back in and just learning to to have faith again and to trust again and um, I I remember one evening so slowly I started to read my I started to read my devotional books which I had stopped reading the fact I had put them all aside I started to to just spend time with him and I remember one evening I was playing my my gospel music and this song came on Oof. And it was um and it was I lay cold and it was come unto me and then the words of the song it was like God was asking me to come back. This is what it was.